because a lot of times when you're in a program, a coach makes you into something you're not. And I mean, we all want our people to, you know, sometimes you have to like make money, you know, you have to like put food on the table and feed the kids and pay the mortgage and all that stuff. It's practical. But then you get to a certain point where that becomes bankrupt really quickly if we're Mm -hmm. not in that alignment. Hey there, and welcome to the Tribe of Leaders podcast. I'm your host, Emmy Kirshner. I'm a serial entrepreneur, investor, and business coach for ambitious women who are boldly taking their business to the next level. And I believe that building a successful business isn't about working 24 seven just to merely meet a revenue goal. What it does take is a unique blend of dedication to purpose, courageous action, and frequently sheer will to overcome the odds that lead to meaningful impact and experiencing a life well lived. In each episode, you'll get to know the women and men who are unafraid to put it all on the line as they share the stories of success and failure that have made them incredible leaders and the magic they gift the world with. As you're listening, and I hope finding value, don't forget to share the Tribe of Leaders podcast with all of your other entrepreneurial friends and to follow us wherever you're listening to this podcast. Hey Tribe, when it comes to somebody who is taking a stand for women in business, my dear friend Marie Fratoni is one of those women. She's the CEO of Get Clients Everywhere, and she works globally to help professionals build solid, successful businesses. She also runs Women's Professional Development Network and over the years has founded and run a number of different networking opportunities for women. And she also leads annual transformational retreats in Italy. I have not been yet. I have heard that they are some of the most fantastic events that you could possibly attend. And I was delighted when she offered to do a podcast, to do a podcast takeover with me. So in this episode, we once again have turned the tables and Marie really delved into the why I do what I do. So we talk about why it's so important for women to really step into their leadership, um, what I'm most passionate about, and how to really get into that big dream and just blow it up. So listen in. Welcome to the Tribe of Leaders podcast. And guess what? I'm not Emmy. I am (laughs) Emmy's friend. (laughs) You are. And, uh, my name is Marie Fratoni. I live in Atlanta and I'm the CEO of Get Clients Everywhere. And it is just my honor to get to switch the tables on Emmy and actually give her a chance to shine. And we're going to do an interview with her and hear the juiciness that's going on with her life. I think that will be really fun. So we're just going to jam it up here today. What do you think? I'm excited. I'm like super <laughs> excited. I love being on the other side. And I love juicy conversations. So, well, we just kind of plotted some things. You know, Emmy and I were just chatting a little bit beforehand. We were catching up and hearing all about our lives. And, you know, it's really wonderful when you find someone who is a leader, who is a leader for other people and is leading other people. And yet they're be- they're a leader in their own life, you know, and doing all of these really, really great things. So I wanted to first get present for a moment with Emmy and, you know, she gives a lot. And what I want to do is for people that are listening, that might not know the inside scoop of you or your business or all that you do in your life through your tribe of leaders, tell us what's present for you now and um, what's exciting in, you know, the work that you do. Oh my goodness. What's exciting for me now? There's so many layers to that. So that's a hard question to ask. By the time we're live with this, the my new group program and community, the tribe will be launched. And I'm so excited about that. Partly because of the way I envision that program expanding and the community of women that I know are already starting to come into it. So that's phenomenal. And and the catalyst for that, and I've been playing with it with my high-level clients, is really creating a container for women entrepreneurs to come in and not only step into their leadership, not only like really hone in on the sales and the marketing and team building and all the things that, that happen within the context of business building, but 
to bring them together so that they feel more powerful together and they have a place to be vulnerable, to share stories, to use resources, to utilize each other in a way that they're not doing in their everyday lives. Like one of the things that I love hearing during the two-day CEO retreats that we do quarterly with my legacy leader clients is even though they know each other, even though they're talking to me on a regular basis and we have group calls every other week and they have, most of them have teams that are supporting them every time. It's like, oh, we're so glad that we're here together with each other because I feel like I'm operating in the vacuum still. And it gives them a space to collaborate and create and just build something a little bit different. And that's really what I think lights me up is there's such an amazing opportunity for women entrepreneurs and women in general to play a much bigger game in how we're creating businesses, in how we're leading our lives that I truly believe will create a changing momentum and tide for the better for everything else on the planet. Really good. I'm just taking a note on what you said. That's right. Excellent. Thank you. I just posted on Facebook today too that and I, I got part of this from somebody else, but it's really that when women collaborate, the impossible becomes possible. I saw and, that post. Yeah. And I believe that like we are magic makers. So that's really what's lighting me up right now. Like my ability to bring people together and foster cool relationships, but really it's just my tiny little drop in the bucket contribution to a bigger thing that a lot of people are doing. I love it because um, today on one of my community pages, I posted that we, that I am the magic wand. We are the magic wand. It's like, it's time to access that own inner magic for ourselves. Yeah. And just what you were saying, when you put it together, it becomes magical and it becomes possible. But I know, you know, like the journey that you've had in entrepreneurship is much like the ones that many of us have really had. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's a journey. And for the most part, it's, I think, really a pleasant journey. And I think, you know, you're somebody who has really done well and excelled. And I think you found your spot that really can make a difference. And you, you really have created a container where people are safe and people are inspired and empowered to really grow. But this was a year, I don't know if it was this year or last year, but I remember we talked about a time where you had to take a step back. Mm -hmm. It was something that you did that you, and I think many of us, including myself, took a step back and it was time to reflect and to recalibrate. And I wanted to see like, how long was that? What happened in your recalibration? And is there something new? like this new group that you're creating, is that part of what has been recalibrated? Yeah, it was last year. So I had this really fun experience of, and, and last year being like the start of it was March of 2021. I let go of the woman who was doing my podcast, doing the editing and whatnot. We were, it just was, we weren't driving. Like she's great. She did really good work, but we were having difficulty with communication and things weren't flowing really well. And then the guy who had been working with me for a couple of years, who'd done all of like my backend tech stuff, just disappeared for two weeks, like no contact, no nothing. And then my son who'd been doing work for me also left and was like, and very suddenly, cause he was like, this no longer aligns with my goals. And I love you, Em, but I'm quitting. <laughs> As I was in the middle of like, I don't have, I don't even know how to do the thing in the back end to make the things happen. <laughs> and then I was just like, there's something else that happened too. But those th were the three things that I'm like, maybe I'm not supposed to be doing this. <laughs> like, what, what else is there that is supposed to be in my world happening, etc. And at the same time, I had also started doing some contract coaching for another company. And I was working with much bigger businesses and in a very different format, which was super cool because it gave me a lot of insight, like that information of working with those companies really informed my decision to step back into my business. So I would still have clients, still have clients coming in, but I essentially wasn't doing any marketing for like nine months, maybe seven months, but still. And it gave me time to really get clear about what I want and what my purpose is and my mission is and how do I serve 
my people. So like throughout the le- the rest of 2021, and I took a, I was still working a lot, but I decided to you know take, I think it was six weeks, but where I moved out of my apartment, everything was in storage and I just traveled down South. So primarily in Charleston, South Carolina, but I was in North Carolina, I was in Georgia. So I was in all these different spaces that were super cool. And being out of that regular routine really created an opening for me just to be in that constant space of doing something differently or having to acclimate, which was great for creating ideas and clarity for me. So I always come back to like my, my purpose as a person is to serve other women and is to help them elevate. So how do I do that in a way that works for me and is in alignment with me and how do I help them be in alignment with themselves? So like I just got off the a call a little bit before we hopped on Zoom with somebody and she's struggling with her marketing because the way, the way, and I'm air quoting everybody, she feels like she has to do it, doesn't align with who she is. So we I just talked through that with her and and she was like, oh, thank God, like sigh of relief, right? Because that's that's what's gonna make your business really thrive is being in alignment with who you are as a woman and and creating your business from that space so had i not gone through this whole thing last year i wouldn't be here saying some of those things because it really cemented for me and then i went into kind of like planning mode last december which is my hibernation time from from work in general like i don't create new things in december and it's my um and a plan, think, create, create things to do later when it's not cold and dark and wintry, like, but if, if, there were a lot of moments that were really uncomfortable. And at the same point, you have to go through those moments to get to the next level. It's nice. I, you said something really great where you said, I, I stepped back so I could go in so I could step into my business. I stepped back to yeah. step in. That's actually what you said. And I really like that. I can, I think a lot of people today are in that conversation of like stepping back and looking, you know, I think partly, you know, our COVID pandemic, you know, kind of stopped everybody in mm-hmm. what they were normally doing. So that gave, and then you had some things that, so COVID was an outside force that right. kind of had to stop, but you had some other things, you know, outside of you with your relationships and podcasts and your marketing and whatever it kind of inspired you to, to take, to, to step aside and just kind of like, just be with like allowing yourself to like, listen, allowing your soul to kind of emerge to say, what is it that, you know, makes sense for me today? And I think that is actually really smart. It would actually encourage a lot of people. The question that I have for you is when you took that time off and when you were recalibrating and, and just going inside, did you have any kind of ritual or anything that you did daily or weekly, or did it just like organically evolve? Or did you actually do some things to actually step back and, and carve out what it was? Yeah. So I was in a different place, like every, every week almost. So the, that was one of the things that was really interesting because I, there wasn't a, any one routine that I kept on any one day or any one week for that matter, because other than my normal, like get up and sleep at kind of the same times and my work schedule was kind of all over the place too with the again the exception of like i don't generally talk to people in the morning that's my time to focus on stuff but it was it was having the quiet and being alone like i i did spend some time at my parents house in north carolina but even then it was like my morning time was i would stay in my like bedroom area and i would go to into my bedroom at like nine o'clock at night and just be like, all right, see you later, people. Like I'm all done talking to the world. So, and the rest of it, I was just by myself, which was great. Like having that space to think and have solitude is really, I think, beneficial. Yeah. I I like that because if you really think about it, if you go back in time to all the like leaders, the saints, the enlightened ones, they all spent time in solitude. So they can listen to spirit. You can listen to your higher self, you know, come through. So now coming out of that and now you're back and your life is back in motion, you're filling your program. 
How would you say that that time away has really impacted what it is that you're doing now or has it? Oh, totally. It's completely because if I hadn't taken the time, I wouldn't have had the clarity and I wouldn't have maybe not even stepped back into my business. Like I left with, and really over the summer, I was kind of like, I, you know, all right, when things start happening in threes and nothing feels like it's working, like something's got to change. I just don't know what the change is supposed to be right now. Mm-hmm. So I had to kind of let that fill in. So the enthusiasm and then also the the general information of, I know I don't like this. Like, I know I don't like that. I'm not going to do this anymore because those things don't light me up and I'm all done doing things that don't light me up. And there has to be a way to create success and and create the results that I want to in a way that lights me up. And I'm not saying like, don't make sales calls or I don't know, all of the just general things that we have to do to, to run a business. It's not that it's more the, I feel very out of alignment doing this thing, or I feel pressured into doing something else just because this is what the the new cool trend is in marketing. And that was really powerful for me, right? Like that was, I have to remind myself too, because it's easy to get kind of caught up in some of that and, and not just in business, like even in life, right? Oh, everybody's doing this thing. Maybe I should too, even though it doesn't really give me any sense of purpose or joy. Yeah. Like I'm not doing Wordle every day. (laughs) You know what I mean? It can be that simple, but all of a sudden it's like everywhere, you know, it's kind of funny. Yeah. Well, you know, it's really great what you're saying, because I think, you know, um, I like what you said about if it doesn't bring me joy or if I'm not really aligned with it. You know, I've had a lot of people say to me, oh, Marie, why don't you do your networking savvy? When are you going to do that? And I feel like, you know, there's a time where I've been in business for a long time. Right. Mm -hmm. And and I feel like for a lot of things, I've been there, done that and gotten several Um, (laughs) T-shirts. And it's not that that isn't important, but I'm looking at what's a newer way for me to express that so that I don't have to either teach the same content teach it the same way, use the same handouts. What could I do to give it a facelift or to recalibrate that program? Because it's actually quite good. So, and I'm guessing that with the work that you do, it's pretty similar, you know, in that you have got this core program where you're helping entrepreneurs be empowered and grow and build their business. And yet you're probably bringing in some new aspects of your newfound self into it. Oh yeah. Like the, the, fundamentals of how I operate and, and from the function of the program with the tribe, like that's not really changing. It's getting a beautiful facelift and it's really looking at everything newly. Like how do I serve my people and what do they need right now? And, and creating almost a container or a library, because one of the things that I want to be able to create is, um, a place where women entrepreneurs can come and they have enough resources to be able to fast track their business businesses and shorten the learning curve. And there's learning curves in all, I mean, at all levels, whether you're at six figures, seven figures, eight figures and, and make that, I want to, I want to have like the way I vision it is I want to have a lot of information, but make it easy to pick out the three things that you actually need and not overwhelming either because i think when you have a lot of of information to choose from then it's the oh i've got to learn all this stuff and that's exactly what i want to get away from yeah it's really good i think you know i i love being able to know who your audience is that you can best serve and Mm -hmm. you know we all know that whatever it took for us to get to a certain level though, like the foundations, as you said, those building blocks, like I'm beyond building blocks. I've got my blocks in the hard rocks, the big rocks are in the jar, you know, and, and you have that too. So it's like, what's the fun stuff that we can start to put in. That's the other sand or the sprinkles that um, sprinkles, good word for you. <laughs> um, you know. Right. <laughs> you know, but it, that's what it is. It's like, it's almost like adding that, that polish, that can really be there because I think that's the piece that we see, you know, if all we see is somebody polished and there's no underpinnings, those big rocks aren't there, then the polish is just going to like slide away. But the big rocks are important, but then it's also important to add that the spiffy self, you know, the, the sparkling self and all of those things to be able to do that. And I think you do that so nicely with people. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. 
If people had to know something about yourself that maybe in your marketing or something isn't there, is there something that you would want your listeners and your audience to know about you that might not always get the light shown on? I'm just kind of pulling that out of the sky here. Yeah, because I think it's hard to communicate in marketing because you can say it and it cannot um, mean as much unless you're hearing me say it. And that's like... I get up and live and breathe my clients and their success all the time and not in a like creepy stalkish way, but like I'm thinking sure. about them or, or, you know, how can I help them with any number of things? And I'm celebrating them when there's times to celebrate. And I really, really care. And I am so dedicated to helping them get results, not just from the perspective of, more revenue and profitability, but also how can I help them elevate into their best self? Because that's what I see. And frequently they don't see it. Yes. It's great to have a coach. It's great to have somebody who sees you bigger, you know, or sees the future that you could step into. We don't always see it right. And I hold that space for them as they're moving through. And the cool part is they start to recognize it. And then I get these phone calls you're not going to believe what I just did, right? Like, oh my God, I just did the thing like out of the blue, which is really like, I'm so grateful that that they're experiencing the success. And the first thing they want to do is share it with me because it's not my expectation ever. So like for me, well, that's, that's a lot. Yeah. I always say a similar way, maybe not as eloquent as you just said it, but I would say what make, gives me great joy is when my clients get clients, yes. you know, it, it's uh you know, it, it's just kind of a, it's a wonderful feeling because that's what we're really helping people do is to really build that. And none of us can have a business without clients. And that's what makes the rocks look pretty. <laughs> right. Besides the glitter I'm throwing on it. <laughs> you know, we all need a little glitter, you know, it's uh, it yeah. hasn't been very glitter filled, you know, lately, but it's starting to get glittery out there. I don't know. I'm kind of in the flow and it sounds like you are too. You're at work at things. Your life is changing. Your, your geography is changing. Your podcast yeah. is changing. A lot of things really happening. So there's a lot of activity. And I think that mirrors what's out there for people. And I think it's such a time for women to really step up and to really like take their own leadership. You know, even with the group that I lead, it's like, it, it's like, you know, one of my signs is you're not thinking big enough and, and people are asleep to the fact that they're not thinking big enough. Mm -hmm. So if I say it and it wakes them up, they might go, Oh, maybe I'm not. What if I were, you know, and see what's possible there. Yeah. 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 Cause I I have so many thoughts going through my head at the same time. (laughs) We're trying to organize them into a sentence. I totally agree with you because I see women and it's like they've got half of this little dream that they're too afraid to acknowledge. And I've said this before on the podcast. I don't remember what episode either, but that's part of like the work for me is it's similar to you is like take that little glimmer of a dream that they're thinking about and blow it up and then get them there. Like that's I like that. Yeah. Take your dream, blow it up and let's get you there. There's your marketing. (laughs) <laughs> that was easy but you know sometimes in the simplicity i mean that's really it and i think you know i think we're, we're we have such a culture and such we've been a culturized acculturated i don't know what the right word is there but you know the world sees women as however they see women mm-hmm. and we know as women that we're not in that little box but yet we still operate like we're in that box, even though up here we want to go outside the box, but we don't always take those out. Like some people would call it 10 X in your business or 10 X your idea or 10 yeah. X your money or things like that is one way to access it. But, you know, I, I just wish that there are, our world would really be resounding in what it is that women could provide. And, you know, my stand for a long time has been that women should be leading the world. And we can't do that if we're not really self-supporting and self-sufficient and are doing things inside of community with other people. And you provide that, you know, you provide, you access however you access your clients and then you take them where they are, you see where they want to go, you expand that vision, you help them put in what needs to take place. 
do you do a lot of inner work with people or is it is it more strategy or building or a combination yes i do yeah. i know you're very strategic i know that about you you know very logical and systematized uh, yeah. which is great and most of my clients tend to be way more creative so breaking all of that down so that they can interpret it in their head and then make it work is one of my most favorite things but yeah i do a lot of mindset with them yeah because if their dreams only this little half glimmer until they believe it, they can't build it. So it's like, I can blow it up. I can see the whole picture and create stuff. But as soon as if they shut down or they have barriers, then they can't, they can't build it. Even if they're excited by it, because it's still scary, new and unknown. And, and, and I think this goes for like anything in life right? Like you can see the cool thing that you want to have out there. Maybe it's a vacation home or a new car or whatever, but you don't know how to get there. And it feels like wishful thinking. So until you believe that you can have it, then it's harder to take action. So I help them. Yeah. It's great. You know, um, I have this conversation with people all the time. It's like to, you know, what could they do to really uplevel their belief? And and the logical mind says, well, I don't believe it. I don't have any evidence. But when you take on a belief, like it's all made up, but if you pretend you believe it, then belief creates the evidence. It's not the other way. People, people always think, well, I'm going to see the evidence and then I'll do it. Uh -uh." (laughs) No, no, you have to trust and, and blindly, which is hard and challenging. And I'd love to say I've mastered it and I have not. And I remind myself like every day and you just have to trust that it's going to work out and it's going to, it can happen. There's a, the possibility of that. And then there's a new level. It's like you've manifested all kinds of things that you believed. So have I, but then there's like, what's the next thing? Where's the next thing that we're going to do? And then we're always hit with that same thing. It's like, well, I don't know if I can do it. I don't know if, you know, if I should do it all the, you know, this yeah. stuff, you know, kind of starts to happen, but it, it's really good. You know, as we, um, I want to just really check for like our time because I could just like blab with you all day long. I mean, it's kind of fun. You're my last call. Okay. So I just didn't know in terms of our, you know, the podcast thing. I'm all yours. Well, that's cool. Um, (laughs) You know, it's really fun. It's like looking at, you know, even, um, you know, for the listeners, you know, Emmy and I met years ago in another coaching program where we were all kind of growing up together. And, um, you know, we've, we've had different turns and tasks have taken place. And, you know, there's a, a great business philosopher, maybe you know of him or our listeners do here, but he was Jim Rohn. Oh, and yeah. I just love Jim Rohn. I saw him many times and um, he used to have this great line and I use it a lot. Um, where he said, time will either promote you or expose you. And it's kind of a hard line, you know, it's like, but I think it's really important because we can see people that we've known for years and we can see what they've done and we can see what they've accomplished. I mean, life is going to happen to all of us. People are going to get sick. They leave, they die, they get sick, a house burns down, all those things. Oh yeah, Life happens. Life happens. But yet when you can take a look at someone that you met 10 years ago or 20 years ago or five years ago and watch what they've done to accelerate their business, their communities, how they've expanded and grown. It's just really delightful to be able to, to see that. And I think when we're involved in programs, and I would say this for the people that are working uh, with you, Emmy, when you're in a program and you're in a container like that, the community also is what really calls you to be. It, it's also something that it, it, it's a good thing to do to be in a tribe really is there there's something that happens on a group level on a tribe level mm-hmm. that would never occur if you were working one to one and the and vice versa you have the one to one experience to be able to do it so is your program currently happening or is it when is it going to be starting do you want to share the program or how people can get into that program with you oh yeah so they can just go to the website so it's emmykirshner.com and be forward slash the tribe, I think, but go to emmykirshner.com and it's there. And yeah, they can enroll. They can enroll now because it's open. Is there any process for people to enroll? Do they have to be? They just have to talk to me. (laughs) Okay, good. Yeah, well, that's good. It's conversation. Yeah, it's application because one of the things that's important for me is that everybody's a good fit. And that doesn't mean that you have to be in the same level or the same place. It's more the dynamics of the group. And 
you have to want to be committed to not only growing your business, but being open and building relationships with other people. So so who would be the right person? Describe the right person for that program. And maybe they'll hear themselves in this podcast. So somebody who, one, hasn't quite reached a place where their marketing and their sales are consistent, sustainable, profitable. Those three things are really important to me. Everybody talks about scaling and that's great, but you can scale and not be sustainable or profitable. And I want people to feel connected, as I was saying, like aligned to their marketing as well. So we start with that, we get into the sales and then it's growing, you know, growing their team when they're ready, if they're, if they haven't already, but somebody really who's looking for a community of women to be in that they're supporting, you know, each other and they are committed to giving and receiving that support because there's going to be times when it's not me calling you out on the BS. And if that's not okay, then this isn't the right space. And, and we they all, could have any kind of industry, represent any kind of industry or... Yeah. I mean, I tend to work with all service-based entrepreneurs, yeah. but I have a couple of people who are have products that they're selling too. So it's really, you want to make a difference in the world and you want to have impact and you want to do it in a way that works for you and your family or, or whoever is surrounding you and you are... I'm going to say morally opposed to the hustle and grind mentality that a lot of people still have. Cause I just, I don't think it works long time, long term. Like I've never seen anybody be like, Oh, I've been working 18 hours a day for 30 years. And I feel great about that. And I'm not sick ever. And blah, blah, blah. Like everybody gets burned out, overwhelmed, exhausted, and they have health issues. I haven't met anybody and I haven't read about anybody who can do that long term. Yeah, I would agree. Sometimes the people that you just described are in corporate America and not necessarily in entrepreneurship. Yeah. So, cause you know, they, they don't have a break or they're accountable to too many people, you know, in that. So if people went to your website, emmykirshner.com. Mm-hmm. Is there something that they have? Do you have any kind of resources on there for people um, that are available, yeah. a freebie, anything like that? I have an entire page of resources and the most fun thing for them to check out is my guide called the aligned entrepreneur so it's five ways for women entrepreneurs to really align with who they are in their business and five things that it's all the same five things but that we're not thinking about it's like it's kind of closing the gap um so i'm not going to tell you what any of them are gonna download it it's free. I was going to say, you got me hooked. I'm going to say, I'm going to your website and I'm going to go download that and listen and uh, <laughs> is it, is it book or something. Is that what it is? Yeah. 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 Got it. Cool. Uh, and, very, very good. Yeah. And I think scannable. So hopefully everybody else does too. Yeah. yeah. It's really great. You know, I, I think that's, what's really nice is that you have this body of intellectual property that you bring, or, you know, I know that you're really smart and you're very systems oriented and, you know, you, you have a great mind. And it's like, you also have the ability to provide things. And I think that piece of alignment is just, you know, if, if the, our listeners could take away anything, you know, I think it's so important because a lot of times when you're in a program, a coach makes you into something you're not. And I mean, we all want our people to, you know, sometimes you have to like make money, you know, you have to like put food on the table and feed the kids and pay the mortgage and all that stuff. It's practical. But then you get to a certain point where that becomes bankrupt really quickly if we're not Mm -hmm. in that alignment. So I love that you're helping people really focus on that. As we bring this conversation to a close, A, it's been super fun to just really like hear who you are today and all that that you're up to. I really am going to go to your website and download those things as well. And is there anything else that you want to just add that's like burning or that we didn't cover here today that you'd like to get in the space? I'm just going to share my, my favorite quote which I've probably said on other episodes too, because it's the same one for years, but it is from the Dalai Lama and it's the point of life is happiness. And for me, that's very, it's so simple, but it's so powerful. So when I get wrapped up in too many things, like, oh, that's right. I'm supposed to be like actually enjoying this. Yeah. Like I love that. Yeah. Play in, I want to say break the rules because that's part of, of 
being an aligned entrepreneur is like create rules and structures and, and containers that work for you. One size does not fit all. No, thank God. Thank God. I know. (laughs) Well, congratulations on your great success. Congratulations on all the things that are really happening and coming forward in your life. And it's just been really fun to be able to do this. Thank you for giving me the gift of being able to interview you and putting the spotlight on you. Well, I'm so grateful that you were open to doing it. So thank you. And I'm going to tell everybody in the intro, they've already heard it, but just share again who you are and what you do too. Okay. So Marie Fratoni, I live in Atlanta and I am the CEO of Get Clients Everywhere. And I do a lot of the similar things that uh, Emmy does, only I do have my Marieisms with yeah. it, but I like to really work with women and help them get their messaging out and help them show the, the big blocks of how to actually put the foundations in to actually build a sustainable business where you do have the predictable cash flow. My favorite thing is leading transformational retreats in Italy and coaching speakers to get their message out. Yeah. I have to go on one of your trips at some point. I know, right? Yeah. Maybe we can create one. We can. We can definitely. We can create anything. We can. And that's a great place to sort of end this and to let the listeners know you can create anything and then have a support system and the right people to help you take that creation and dream and idea and bring it to fruition. It is possible. Absolutely. And yeah, we are going to end on that. So thank you. Thank you so much for being a listener of the Tribe of Leaders podcast. I am so grateful for each and every episode that you tune in and listen to. And I hope that you get a ton of value that you can implement starting today. I do have just a quick favor. If you wouldn't mind hopping on to wherever it is that you listen to podcasts and leave us a rating and review, it would help us tremendously so that the Tribe of Leaders podcast can be found more easily and help inspire other entrepreneurial leaders. 